Hi there, I hope you're well. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at extrusion and other hardware, in particular the rail hinge that you might need if you're going to put your own Festool MFT or MFT style bench together. I've done loads of videos on the MFT already, so I don't want to drone on too much about it. There's an entire playlist dedicated to MFT and MFT related stuff. I'll link those up. Uh, all those videos, that playlist down below. But let's do a very quick whistle stop tour around the MFT, then we'll get into the, the nitty gritty, the reasons why I want to change it, uh, what I'm going to change it with. Now, Festool's MFT or multifunction table was conceived as a portable bench with a frame made of aluminium extrusion and folding steel legs folded up under here for now, and an MDF top with a perfectly square array a grid of holes on 96 millimeter centers, as well as ample clamping opportunities. The extrusion allows for a rail hinge and front support assembly to be easily added and removed, and the fence and flag stops make repeat accurate cuts really easy. The full Festool MOT is not a cheap option, but overall I've no regrets about buying one of these. And back when I was doing the fitted furniture work, it was the thing that enabled me to compete with other makers, other companies with much bigger workshops and much bigger budgets for much more expensive gear. So if it's that great, why do I want to change it? Well, as I said earlier, it's a portable bench that's being used in a static situation. And having made a couple of portable benches of my own last year, I think I can make something better suited to workshop use. For example, because I use mine in a static situation in a run of benches like this, I never use the side extrusions for clamping in fact, I'll tell you what, let me pull up a chair and I'll get into the details. So when it comes to talking about extrusion and other hardware, the first thing you need to decide is whether or not you want a rail hinge. Now for me and the workshop, that's pretty much an essential because I do a lot of chopping and changing when you're on the bench. And if you're happy with bench dogs or rail dogs, then that's fine. That makes your decision much, much easier. For the rail hinge, you can buy the Festool OEM version as a spare part, and this is the least costly option, not often you get to say that, at around £60 or so. The hinge and front support set come in at around £110, and they fit into the standard MFT extrusion and can be easily removed as required. Now I say standard MFT extrusion, both the older MFT 1080, like this one, and the newer MFT 3 use a proprietary extrusion, a proprietary profile, and the T-bar on the back of the uh, Festool parts seem to be specifically designed to only be able to use them with their own profile. Shocker! So if you're going for the Festool hinge set and want to use clamps as well as the hinge, then you'll need to brace yourself for spending around £150 for a pair of MFT3 extrusions as a spare part, or around £200 if you prefer the MFT1080 profile like this one, which has T-track in the top as well. Now I haven't found any heavy or medium duty off-the-shelf profile that will work happily with both the Festool OEM parts and the rail clamps and if anybody knows different please let me know in the comments down below as I would genuinely love to hear about it. There is a little glimmer of hope, a much cheaper lighter weight profile that works well enough. We'll come back to that later on. So your alternative rail hinge, and there do only seem to be two options, is the set from Dashboard PWS, the portable workstation from Rob Schumacher in the US. I've been chatting with Rob off and on for a while and I bought the full set from him recently. Now this set is absolutely fantastic quality and can be ordered with either fittings for the Festool extrusion or for standard T-Track. Now what does standard T-Track mean? Well I sent Rob drawings of what I had in mind and I'm happy to say that the standard T-Track fittings with 8mm T-bolts that you get from Dashboard works perfectly with the Rutland's uh, T-Track that I bought from a while ago. This is externally 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch wide, 12 mil or half inch high, and the internals measuring a half inch wide by a quarter inch high. Weirdly, the slot in the top is eight millimeters, which is perfect for both rail clamps and the T-belt supply. Now, while the Dashboard set is well designed and superbly made, it is not a cheap set, especially for us folks in the UK. I paid the equivalent of 
£235 for this set, including shipping, and then I was also hit for £51 import duties and handling fees, so more than twice the price of the Festool OEM set. I kind of go out on a limb here and say that the machined aluminium set from Dashboard is actually getting on for 10 times the quality of the pressed steel OEM set. It really is that good. What about alternative extrusion to make up the frame? Well, pretty much anything with an eight mil slot will work with the dashboard set. If you go for this uh, heavier duty profile like this 4080 that I bought from KJN with a 10 mil slot, it will work. Just be aware that the rail clamps will be kind of loosey goosey in there. And when you tighten them up, they'll almost always pull at an angle like that. The dashboard T-bolts will just fit, but the festival parts will not because the walls of the profile are too thick. If you look around online, you'll see a lot of our uh, American cousins talk about 80-20 profile. Just be aware that 80-20 profile here in the UK, like this length that I bought from the guys at Oosnest, has a smaller six millimeter slot. So whilst it's great for making up frameworks or frames, you won't be able to fit a rail clamp into it. So the dashboard set is pricey, but excellent. The one slight niggle I have with it is that it overhangs the pivot point of the hinge. It extends beyond the bench by a good 185 mil or so. That's getting on for twice as much as the Festool OEM hinge. And for my intended use, up against a wall, that would push the bench out by a good few inches further into the workshop. And I'm honestly not sure how I'm gonna feel about that until I've done it and lived with it for a while. This does mean though that I'd quite like to have the option of fitting the original Festool OEM hinge, which means that we're back to looking for an alternative profile to the 100 pound a meter or so Festool extrusion. And fortunately, there is a slight glimmer of hope from an unlikely source. This is Ikea's Vidga curtain track. No, seriously, um, <laughs> Ikea make a curtain track called Vidga and it has a very familiar looking profile at the end there. I need to give a quick shout out to, I think it was Rob Mack at the UK Workshop Forum who flagged this up. This was actually on sale last year at just a pound a length. It comes at a 1.4 meter long length and just a pound a length. That's an absolute bargain, even if you just use it as a straight edge. But given the profile on it, I thought it was fascinating to see if we can actually use this as any kind of useful extrusion in an MFT build. Now it's got to be said, this is a lightweight extrusion by anybody's standards, 0.8 of a millimeter thick walls, and it's only 43 millimeters tall and 22 millimeters wide. So it really does need to be set into a bit of 22 mil above and below it. But it does have a T-slot on the back, so you can have a T-bolt to secure it through a backing board. And the three slots at the front are just under eight mil, they're at 7.8 mil or, or thereabouts. So they will take a T-bolt, just about. When it comes to the Festool OEM parts, the rails don't quite fit without a little bit of adjustment. I spent uh, a little bit of time with a sander, just thinning this down a little bit, and that actually fits in there just fine. The disadvantage of the thin walls is that you really do have to tighten this up a lot to stop it from sliding. But once it's tightened, it's pretty solid and I'd be very happy having that secured at the back. The problem with this comes at the front. So I said before, one of the benefits of the MFT is that you can use rail clamps through the extrusion on the outside. You can do that with this IKEA curtain track, but there's a few provisos. Uh, my Festool rail clamps don't work well with it. Uh, either the regular clamps like this, oops, or the fancier lever clamps, because what they've got, they've got a little sort of bump just on the surface of the inside of the clamp there. And because this extrusion is so thin, when you put the clamp in, and clamp it up, it actually clamps to itself. It's not clamping to the extrusion. So it's actually, you can just, it's not clamped. You can slide it back and forth. And that's exactly the same with the Festool lever clamp as well. Um, there's other issues. This Makita clamp is just too big for it. 
it just doesn't fit into the end there happily. And the Axminster clamp seems to work okay. That's all right. And the oops, cheap little Banggood Drill Pro clamps. They work fine as well. So depending on what type of clamp you've got and what type of type of clamps you're expecting to use, it's debatable whether this is going to work for you as a front rail. Um, I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to use regular T-Track. In fact, I'll use two two pieces of T-Track. But I'm going to use this as the as a rear uh, extrusion simply because it, as I said before, it gives me the option to use either the Festool hinge or the dashboard hinge. One thing that Rob did say was that dashboard, uh, with the dashboard hinge there's quite a lot of stress on this as the hinge sort of is raised and lowered and he thought this was a little bit on the thin side at 45mm. There's nothing to stop you doubling two of those up of course to provide more support but as I said I'm going to set that into some 22mm board above and below it to keep it really solid and I'll secure it through the back with the 8mm T-bolt. So that's the extrusion side of things pretty much done. <laughs> Cut and track MFT, that's going to be the uh, the title for the, for the main video, hasn't it? Um, most of this extrusion costs between 20 and £30 a metre to buy. The IKEA one is £19 for a 1.4 meter length of that curtain track and the regular T-Track from Rutlands. Uh, I think they're doing it for two lengths for 30 quid or something like that. This is this is stuff I had forever. I think I bought four for 50 quid or something like that anyway. Um, but yeah, that's all I've done. Let's have a very quick look at some of the other fittings and things that you might need. A uh, quick look at a fence system and then we'll wrap this one up and call it done because I really do want to get on and get this made. So fence system first, I'm going to go with the bench dogs fence system. And I've bought the right hand mini fence extension as well. Uh, the benefit of this obviously is that it's removable because it's on the fence dogs system. And I'm going to arrange the holes in my MFT. I'm going to make the MFT top specifically for it. I'm going to arrange those so that the fence is as far, far up the bench as possible so that hopefully I don't have to take it off too often. We've got these really lovely all metal flag stops now, which are really superb. And I'm looking forward to having the uh, small extension to the right as well, because I often do a lot of narrow rips. Other things that you might need that you might find handy, boxes of little bits and pieces. Uh, I've bought this from Rutlands. It's a little complete set with eight mil bolts and star knobs and T-knobs and T-nuts and all kinds of good stuff in there. Uh, that was on special. It was 30 quid reduced down to 20. I think at 20 it's okay value. Um, not sure I'd pay 30 for it but that's just me being cheap. And I've also bought previously some of these uh, UJK ones from Axminster. Just little star knobs and some regular sort of 50 mil T-bolts. So that'll come in handy as well. Again, all this stuff is widely available from all manner of different sources. Okay, so let's recap this quickly. We've, we've had all the extrusion <laughs> we can manage here. We've got 40, 80, we've got 80, 20, we've got 20, 40. We're not gonna use any of these. We're just gonna stick with, bizarrely, some IKEA curtain track and some regular T-track. But if all you want to do is build a frame, then any of these will work. If you want to build a frame that takes a guide rail clamps, then you want an extrusion with an 8mm slot. As far as I know, any extrusion with an 8mm slot will work. But let's get these out of the way, because I'm definitely not going to use any of these. Not on this project, anyway. So, at the back of my bench, I'm going to have my IKEA curtain track. I'm using that because it will work with the dashboard front and rear rail supports and it will also give me the option 
to use the festival one if I find that the dashboard one pushes the whole bench too far forwards. At the front, I'm going to use regular T-Track because that's all I need. All it's ever going to do is have the front rail support, which is only ever going to be the dashboard one, and rail clamps in it, and they work perfectly with rail clamps. For a fence, I'm going to use the bench dogs fence and the bench dogs right hand side extension fence with flag stops. And I've got all the little bits and pieces that I need extra from my Rutland set. And I've still got a couple of spare knobs on the UJK and some T-bolts as well. That's that's kind of where we are. That's that's kind of what we need for now. Um, obviously we've got to put this together into some kind of order, some kind of sense and I've got to get the top made and figure out the measurements and the dimensions of all this stuff but I think I'm going to call this one done because I'm really keen to get on and get that MFT made because I've still got to figure out how to support it side to side I've still got to figure out exactly how big I want it to be uh, and I want to get on with that, so I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Thank you, as always, to my amazing Patreon supporters and YouTube members whose continued support and endless patience <laughs> have been living with me through this for a, a fair few months. Uh, it really helps me to keep the lights on here and really gives me fantastic feedback on the kind of things that I need to do for the public-facing videos on the channel. Um, but that's it for this one. Thanks ever so much for taking a look, and I'll see you in the next video when I'll be putting this MFT together and get, actually getting it working. All right, take care.